Hi guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, I do mean over the top beautiful day. Here in the collapse of global industrial civilization on this gorgeous, it is actually Thursday, January 20th, 2022. Uh, but I have a big day because we are closing, I hope, in a couple of hours here at Crazy Crane Campground, I will be selling this place to another fellow who's going to be here for the next few days. And I don't think he wants to sit around and listen to me talking about how doomed we are while he's planning to build a house in Florida in five years from now. Probably doesn't want his mellow celebration harshed. So I'm just racing ahead uh, to try to preload some rants. And so we're going to pretend like it is Saturday, January 22nd, 2022, for our weekly Apocaloptimism Hopium Roundup, where I hope this battery is uh, going to last. So I'm just going to plow ahead. We got a bunch on the, uh, already probably have too many to get to. I'm not going to be able to get deep into many of these, uh, but you can probably figure out uh, how this rant would sound if the battery does turn off in the middle of it. So this little dog is hoping he can get that swirly like that. And uh, all right. This is in just no particular order. This is a combination of emails I have received, uh, things that people have sent me, the mainstream media, the alternative media. Good God. We're going to start with the hilariously named Climate Reality Project. This is the Climate Reality Project. As we mark one full year in office of, for President Joe Biden, we're taking a look back at his climate record and we're seeing a clear path forward for year two. Yes, let's look at where things stand at the end of year one of his administration. A year ago, our fight changed. Yes. For years, we fought to protect our lands, our water, our air, and our climate from government officials more concerned with protecting fossil fuel profits than protecting our planet. But with the inauguration of President Biden, President Biden, yes, and Vice President Harris, we were, we were, we were, <coughs> hopeful that we were starting a new chapter in this fight. Yes. Uh, to push this administration to go further and faster than all these cynics and pundits said we could to accelerate a just transition to clean energy in this country, to tackle rising inequality and rising temperatures together and build a better life for millions with green jobs and clean energy. We have seen some wins and disappointments over the past year. Yes, what's important is that the pressure we have put on Biden and other leaders is working. It is working, bold-faced and italics. Our advocacy and energy are influencing how this administration responds to the existential threat of the climate crisis. Yes. Thank you for a dose of climate reality. Okay, from climate reality, I love it when they ask a question in a headline. 
coming from the bite. <clears throat> New technique turns plastic waste back into refinery quality oil. Is this a solution to our growing plastic waste problem? The answer, of course, is no. It is not a solution to our growing plastic waste problem. What it is, in the most optimistic scenario, it is a solution to addressing, my guess is maybe 0.03% of the problem. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm quite sure turning plastic waste I I into oil is going to be a lot cheaper and easier than just drilling for more oil, uh, number one, and then of course uh, getting uh, people to actually throw their plastic I anyway. Moving on, we all know the question, uh, the answer to the question, is this a solution to our growing plastic waste problem. All right, this is just going down the Rolodex. All right, another question. What is Africa's great green wall and how could it affect the climate? Africa's great green wall uh, is number one, it, it is one of the biggest greenwashing, uh, greenwashing utopian dreams uh, on the planet that that's sub literally sub-Saharan Africa is going to plant a green wall uh, across Africa to stop the advance of the Sahara Desert. Uh, what it is, the Green Wall is the biggest uh, future uh, charcoal factory on the planet, uh, which is exactly where any trees that do grow into a green wall, uh, they are going to end up as charcoal for all of this uh, rising tide of sub-Saharan Africans to barbecue every single last one of their fellow earthlings on the continent. How could it affect the climate? Well, when they burn all that charcoal, uh, take a guess how it's going to affect the climate as all of that clouds of charcoal smoke go pouring into the air in a few years. That's how it will affect the climate. All right, Elon Musk, just Times Person of the Year. Uh, <laughs> Now this one, uh, come to think of it, uh, finally, Elon Musk and Sam Mitchell can, uh, can agree on something. This is probably the first thing ever out of Elon Musk's mouth that, uh, that I can get behind from Business Insider. Elon Musk laments the declining birth rate, quoting Elon Musk from two days ago. If there are not enough people for Earth, then there definitely won't be enough for Mars. <laughs> oh, Lord, thank you, Elon. Uh, <coughs> That will have to be the title, Elon Musk. If there aren't enough people for Earth, then there definitely won't be enough for Mars. We can only, we can only, we can only hope. Okay, next. This is not uh, exactly hopium. Uh, I just thought it was humorous, and it's kind of a uh, prequel <coughs> to the 
to the next story. These two stories were appearing together from USA Today. Earth's core is rapidly cooling, study reveals. Is our planet becoming inactive? <coughs> yes, Earth's interior is cooling faster than we previously estimated. According to a recent study, prompting questions about how long people can live on the planet. Uh, this is, there are actually some people believing that the cooling of the Earth's core uh, and however many million, they don't have any idea. Uh, you know, easily millions, if not a billion years from now, is this going to make any difference towards anything up here on the surface? Uh, but it's, it's implying that there's actually people who uh, believe that humans will still be on the planet when the cooling of the Earth's core becomes something we need to worry about. But if you think that one uh, is hopium, this is the real story. That was just the prequel to this story. Scientists think they have figured out when the sun will explode and kill us all. Yes. Uh, Scientists are already trying to pinpoint exactly when the sun will die. Yes. Uh, we've been hearing about this uh, since I was in grade school. Uh, while the full death of the sun is still trillions with a T, trillions of years away, some scientists believe the current phase of the sun's life cycle will end as soon as five billion years from now. Yes, effectively the sun as we know it will have died. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, all right, get to the point. Uh, <clears throat> blah, blah. It's a scary time to think about, especially for any life, human or non human, that might remain all those years from now. Uh, throwing out the suggestion in the mainstream media that humans will still be walking this planet in five billion years. Of course, there is a slew of other threats from the sun before that happens. The future of the earth is grim. Yes. While the idea of the sun dying is scary, there is a chance. There is a chance that humanity will not even be around to experience it. Hmm. Damn. All right. Moving on. We're going to send this out one to Brother Alistair. Agen's swarm of ag tech robots wants to make agriculture carbon negative, not just carbon neutral, carbon negatives. We're going to let the robots save the planet. Even though the only thing the robot can do right now is pull weeds, Agen is adamant it is not building just a weed whacking robot. It claims to be on a mission to terraform the earth 
and says it has a path forward making agriculture carbon negative. Yes, the company is building solar-powered autonomous robots that can zoom around in fields using computer vision to tell friend from foe and plant from weed. In its first incarnation, the robot in a fine hot dog, not hot dog, impersonation simply bumbles about, covering up to three acres of farmland per day. Yes. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, moving on. Let's see. Do we have time for three more? We've mentioned this one many times on Manga Bay. Glad to see showing up in the mainstream media on the Telegraph. Jakarta is sinking. So Indonesia will build a brand new capital 1,200 miles away. Indonesia has approved the removal of its capital from slowly sinking Jakarta to a site 1,200 miles away on jungle-clad Borneo Island that will be named Nusantara. Yes, the move was first proposed by President Joko Widodo in April of 2019, citing rising sea levels and severe congestion on densely populated Java Island home to more than 30 million people in its greater metro area, Jakarta has long been plagued by serious infrastructure problems and flooding exacerbated by climate change, with experts predicting a third of the city could be underwater by 2050. Yes. Uh, so off we go. Retreat. Early plans for the new capital depict a utopian design aimed at creating an environmentally friendly smart city. But few details have been confer confirmed. Uh, with Dodo this week said the new capital would be one, quote, where the people are close to any destination, where they can bike and walk everywhere because there are zero emissions. Yes, critics of the capital's move have, warm, have warned it will damage ecosystems in the region where mining and palm oil plantations already threaten rainforest that are home to Borneo's endangered species. Good luck for about 95% of those 30 million uh, people in that hellhole of Jakarta, Indonesia, getting invited to pack up their, uh, their cardboard shacks and move to the utopian paradise of Numasatra, or whatever the hell it's called. Okay, I think we've heard it before, and here we go again on the conversation. Yes, uh... How mechanical trees pull carbon dioxide from the air and lock it away. Yes. All right. The U.S. Department of Energy has a new goal to scale up direct air capture, a technology that uses chemical reactions to capture CO2 from the air. Yes. 
While federal funding for carbon capture often draws criticism because some people, some people see it as an excuse for fossil fuel use to continue carbon removal in some form will likely still be necessary, IPCC reports show. Yes, technology to remove carbon mechanically is now in development and operating at a very small scale, in part because current methods are prohibitively expensive and energy intensive, but new techniques are being tested this year that could help lower the energy demand and cost. And you better believe the people who are investing in that are the fossil fuel companies, which they will use this as an excuse to keep right on about business as usual because we can just catch the stuff and whatever we can't catch we can just suck out of the air and take a wild guess where what they're using the the captured co2 for is to inject in the ground to blast more fossil fuels out of the ground but uh don't worry the washington post is going to wrap up this week's hopium roundup with this one nuclear power could it be a clean energy solutions yeah so what this is in the washington post is, is actually kind of like a uh, a an article for kids uh this is you know written in very simple to understand uh english for adults who do not get it uh, but anyway I guess this is to start indoctrinating the 10 year olds the Washington Post why would the Washington Post be a cheerleader of nuclear power can't imagine but I am going to wrap up this week's uh, hopium roundup and I'm not gonna have time for my Sunday doomsday sermon uh, here on Thursday but maybe I'll get to it uh, anyway wish me luck on uh, my latest flip here in the collapse I highly suggest you get out there and flip real estate while you still can my guys especially Florida waterfront real estate <laughs> look at this gorgeous day I'm off to be a real estate flipper while I still can. Bye guys.